Hello, everybody, and welcome to Grand Slam KBO, our weekly podcast on the Korean Baseball League. This is week 15 for us. On this week's show, there's more on nature and the environment than the game of baseball, as Matthew Kerr talks about a weekend hike that shattered his body, Bradley Hyder on the best cycling lanes here in Korea, there's ice fishing, the seediest motel area in the country, and meeting other MyKBO people. We do look at the current standings, as third to sixth are currently separated by less than three games, and Hall of Fame is finally replaced by Hall of Shame. There's the much maligned Gochak Sky Dome, given a special rant by Bradley Hyder. Matthew thrashes the KBO playoff schedule, and I feel a little bit embarrassed picking unnecessary bunting against these two stellar contributions. We're on YouTube and several podcast platforms. Our email address is grandsamkbo at gmail.com. And you can follow us all on Twitter at grandsamkbo, at Chimek Baseball, and at Grandsam Hyder. Thanks for listening. My name is Andrew Farrell, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Matthew Kerr and the returning Bradley Hyder. It's rare to see him on the show these days, Bradley. Right. Well, it's a, it may be a rare um, um, occurrence, but it's always a pleasurable one. Um, are you drinking uh, Jägermeister again? Um, I'm not going to comment as to what I'm drinking. It's a it's a black liquid, and we'll leave it at that. Coca Cola, Pepsi, <laughs> they're black liquids, and they're they're uh, they're just fine fine drinks as well. So, uh, you Matthew know, if you drink Harris. that stuff, you'll live forever. <laughs> oh. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Andrew. Um, How are so, you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Um, you were doing a little bit of hiking today, and I see that you've already changed your cacao profile picture to image of soul in the background, uh, your feet and your wife's feet in the picture. So where, where did you go hiking today? Um, well, funny story. Lunchtime, I didn't actually think we were going to go anywhere. And then two o'clock rolls around, the wife just says, oh, the weather's really nice today. I'm certain that she looked at one of her friend's Instagrams and they like posted a picture of the sky or something. And she just said to me, hey, let's go hiking. It's like, all right. We went over to uh, Inwangsan, which is up. We went in via Sajikdong and then went our way up to the top and then came out the back way. So we ended up coming all the way down the side road next to Kyongbok Palace. Not on the uh, Blue House side, but on the opposite side. But... Tell you what, it was beautiful up there. Bit of, bit of a challenging one for me though. Like the original, it's only like three hundred and fifty meters up, like a thousand feet or so. But the first six, seven hundred feet are fine going up. The last bit is basically amateur rock climbing. You're basically climbing up, grabbing rocks that are there, grabbing trees, and they've got bunch of ropes like staked into the ground which i'm sure if they were not there it would be almost impossible to make your way up without using your hands um okay so i think be before i ask another question i think it's, it's important to point out that we had a really wet july here probably i think it's on, on record as the wettest july of all time and then today mm. the air quality in seoul was extraordinarily good the weather is beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, this is one of the best days for quite a while. Temperature is perfect, etc. A great day for baseball, a great day for hiking and cycling, etc. Um, are you one of those people who likes to drink some mock with you when you finish your hike? Um, it usually depends on the weather. Like for me, if it's like overcast and it's going to rain later, then absolutely I'll nail the mockley afterwards. But today it was a little bit too hot for the mockley, I think. So for now, I'm just on the tea. I might have a beer later. Not sure. Um, oh, sorry, I've got to, I've got to Instagram it. <laughs> Feeling tired. Might have a beer later. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, one thing that anybody listening to this who's been to Korea before will know that there are amazing mountains around to hike. Even in the middle of Seoul, there's some brilliant yeah. uh, hikes, great views of the city and the surrounding area. Um, Bradley loves spending some time outdoors, but I don't think you're too much of a hiker. Um, not too much. Uh, I do I do a couple of hikes uh, once in a while. Um, it, it's all in good fun. And, 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 you know, one of the great things about Seoul, as you mentioned, there's a lot of 
there's a lot of mountains in Seoul and outside of Seoul that are completely accessible by, if not the spectacular subway system, <laughs> by the, uh, the, the bus system as well. So uh, unlike my country, Canada, where if you want to get to a good, good mountain, you're going to have to you know, arrange your own accommodation, you can get to many, many great mountains uh, through public transport at a minimal cost. So uh, that um, would be what you mentioned. Yeah, we had Al Painter on the show last week. You were absent as per normal, I think, most of the time these days. Um, Al is a really big cyclist. You've mentioned numerous times here how you like cycling. And we'd always plan to do some videos for Grand Slam KBO's YouTube page of cycling to ballparks around Korea, but the virus has put an end to that. So, yeah, you're, you're more into cycling than hiking. What is your, what is your favorite uh, outdoor activity? Or like what, what's the, the best ride you've done or the best hike you've done in Korea? Well, um, I, I'm going to focus on cycling. I mean, that cycling is absolutely incredible uh, in Korea. There's not many places you can go where you won't find a paved, dedicated bike path. But the network of paths and trails that run through Seoul um, is, is absolutely amazing. I, I had got out of cycling when I was about 16 years old. Uh, and then coming to Korea, I just, it seemed like every small town or every, Everywhere I went, uh, there seemed to be a bike path. And when you do your research, you find out they're all interconnected. So uh, I think there, there's really nothing better uh, in, in good weather or even bad weather to, to take the bike out for, you know, 20, 30, 40, 150 kilometers, do 100 miles. And it's just great. Like, um, it's a little rough sometimes going through the heart of Seoul on the Han River just because the sheer number of people and activity. But when you get out into the province that surrounds Seoul, which is called Gyeonggi-do, really in any direction, you can't go wrong. Uh, if, if you're really ambitious, you can go from near the airport where you fly into the country called Incheon, 633 kilom kilometers all the way down to Busan, the second largest city in the country. Mm. Um, and yeah, there's just, it's great infrastructure. Uh, and, and it's uh, it's designed for people of all abilities. So it's I can't say enough good things about the cycling in South Korea. Yeah, I tried to do the um, the Incheon Airport one once before, not all the way to Busan, but I used to live over in Mokdong. So from there all the way over to the airport area was about 30, 35 kilometers to get there, I think, give or take. Okay. And it ended up stopping just where the long bridge to the airport would continue. I couldn't figure out if there was another way to get there after that. But tell you what, like the muscle pain that I experienced the next day after doing that for the first time is nothing I would wish on my worst enemy. Right. Oh, I see. Uh, had you had your road much previously to that to that big ride? Uh, not that one, but before that, I'd kind of built up a little bit and kind of time trialed myself of heading from Mokdong down to Yoido or down to the uh, big screen that they've got on the Han River, oh. where sometimes in the midweek they'll end up showing baseball games on there, which is a fantastic evening out if anyone ever wants to do that. But never anything more than like 30 tops if you include the return trip. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember the first time I, I, I got I got into cycling uh, by a means that I would recommend to most. Uh, I bought a used bike uh, just to see if I was actually going to do this before I put some real money into it. And uh, I rode 80K uh, and I just I just couldn't sit down. It just you go through it. But but like with any uh, muscle that you're you're activating, um, you know, you do it two or three times, and then then you get used to it. And uh, I rarely have muscle pain from cycling now. So, uh, I think I, uh, yeah. one one thing I love doing in, and I know definitely, I think we've all talked about this before. But the good thing about living in Seoul is there's five baseball teams in the Greater Seoul area, and around about five or six football clubs in the two divisions. And I met you at a game before, Matt. I remember the old Mokdong Stadium yeah. where the next years used to play. It's always a lot of fun cycling to a baseball game. I think you can justify having all those beers and all those chicken when they, you get back on the bike and go home afterwards. Because as uh, Bradley was saying as well, the bike paths in and around the city are great, daytime and nighttime. So it, it, I, I think it's a, such a good experience going to a KBO game and then cycling home later on. 
Well, I'll, t I'll tell you what, Andrew, um, your friend, uh, Rob Smith, friend of the... Yeah, Rob Smith. Yeah, friend of the program, uh, recent guest of the program. I met him um, by combining a, a bicycle baseball trip. I, I took the bike down to the southeastern part of the country, a port city called Mokpo, got on the bike, and I rode to Guangzhou, home of the champion Kia Tigers. Uh, I rode... That was about a 95 kilometer ride. Yeah. Uh, I put, put the bike in the hotel, cleaned myself up, and then I, I met Rob and his friends uh, for a ball game. And uh, there you go, you're, you're combined. And then I think, well, I got home um, <laughs> right after the game. So it was a great way to combine cycling and, and baseball in the same day. Yeah, and doesn't you really Wong heard just have, at the ball game. Doesn't Wangju just have some of the seediest places to stay, though? It's amazing oh. every time I go there. Beside the bus terminal? Yep, yep that's the it. one. Yep, yep. <laughs> yep. I, I was at a game with um, Brian Richards, formerly of Grand Slam KBO, and we met Kerry Marr, the famous Lotte Giants fan, outside the Guangzhou bus terminal for some beers at about 1 o'clock in the morning. And Lotte Giants front office guy now. Yeah, Lotte Giants front office guy, and he was there with a couple of his Lotte Giants mates, and we were drinking outside a CU Mart, having the four for ten, which as you all remember, was voted into the Grand Slam Hall of Fame not too long ago. But uh, at 1 or one thirty in the morning, a Kia Tigers player walked by us. Um, probably shouldn't have been up that late, and we asked him for a photograph, and uh, he politely declined. I always get the feeling he probably shouldn't have been out so late on a game day. <laughs> it was a Sunday. Well, at least you had the courtesy of asking. A lot of fans would just be like, snap, 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 and then post it on Instagram. And then the players end up in the paper the next day. Mm. But, but you're right. That's definitely one of the seediest areas. Uh, near, and it's, it's, it's walkable to Kia Champions Field as well. That area just behind the bus terminal is, is pretty sketchy, um, definitely. Bradley? Well, say what you will, but last time I was down there, they had batting cages. And I think uh, batting cages do nothing but improve the, the profile of a uh, neighborhood. Um, I actually just found a batting cage down the road from where I live. Okay. Yeah, it's still got those rubber ball things. It's not a proper baseball that they chuck at you, but it scratches the itch. Do they, uh, do they, they allow for left-handed? Because here's a problem. You know, anyone watches the KBO, just like MLB or, or, or other leagues, you'll notice there's a lot of left-handed hitters. But uh, when you go to these batting cages, there's usually three or four cages. Uh, slow, yep. medium, fast, super fast, and the only way uh, where, where a southpaw can get in there is if they go to the super fast cage. Yeah, and it's yeah. usually not the. It's usually the one that's broken. Yeah, this one. Um, they're all catering to right hand, so they've oh, got the God. slow one, which is like eighty. Then they've got the hundred. Then the one twenty is like the fast, the fast pitch. But on the far right, I think it's a medium speed or it might be a slow speed one. They do have this, a southpaw batter cage. Oh, good. Good. The thing, good. thing I love about a lot of those batting cages is how often they're on the second floor above a car park. And you see these guys. Yep, this one too. To the yeah, they go to park the car and you're just swinging some, uh, you're, just, you're, you're swinging at some pitches straight above them. And they always look up and I think they're always pretty excited when they see a couple of foreigners up there swinging away. The horrible thing is you... You're in your groove, you get a couple of good dingers, you get that proper ping that comes off the bat. Nah. Then they stop and they watch you. Nah. And it's just like, oh no, th this, is this isn't right. I, do I don't like this. And then you just whiff on like three of them in a row. They just have a quiet chuckle to themselves and then sod off to the rest of their day. That, that, that happens to me with, with, with chopsticks. You know, I, I'm eating my meal perfectly fine and then I, I catch someone watching me or maybe someone in the party is like, you use chopsticks really well. And boom, I, I drop them or I, you know, I jam them in my eye. Uh, that's usually intentional. But uh, yeah, as soon as I catch someone watching me, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm not clutch. I, I, I choke worse than the LA Dodgers in the postseason World Series. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm just, I'm just thinking of like Heath Ledger's Joker right now. You doing a magic trick with the chopsticks, just like, Want to see a magic trick? Ta -da! <laughs> Just slam your own head into the table, come up with a chopstick through your damn skull. Oof. 
messy. Ugh. All Indeed. right. We... Um, one other thing then, what about other, now that the summer is uh, slowly beginning to fall away here, we're into the middle of September. As we said, oh, the weather is better this time of year than probably any other time in Korea. But other outdoor activities, you guys ever been ice fishing in Korea? Once. Did you catch anything? Uh, I caught a shoe. <laughs> was it your shoe? It was not my shoe, but I did catch a shoe. It was like a little dinky kitty shoe that they probably put into wash and then let go. Mm. But um, yeah, it was like just a little kid shoe. It's like, okay, don't want that. And I just put it down on the ice and left it be. Well, well since, you br since you brought it up, Farrell, it, it sounds like you may have some experience with ice fishing. I, I think ice fishing is fun over here. And we talked about this recently. Like, it's, it's good for a couple of hours, and then it gets a little bit tedious. But um, you see like a lot of these older dudes sitting around. They're drinking heavily as well. And they all have the, the little box of gochujang, the, the red pepper paste. And when you take a, a fish, you know, you successfully remove a fish from the frozen lake, they're obviously supposed to stun it and kill it straight away. And then they'll always give you some of their go-to junk to dip it in there and then eat it. And I went there with a couple of guys before and we were all pretty sick at the end of the night. But I will definitely do it again. When the season's over, which should be the 2020 KBO season should be over around about Christmas time. And that'll be good then for about a month so, or so. Sometime in 2021, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Good, good to catch up with a bit of uh, ice fishing then. I've heard the way ice fishing done in, is in Korea is they get a bunch of people uh, on a sheet of ice and they dump 5,000 fish uh, into the pond so that everyone catches one. To me, that's not, I don't know if that's what you did. To me, when I think of ice fishing, I think of sitting in a little hut with a 2-4 with, with no on, on Lake Superior in, in northern uh, Ontario uh, for four or five hours um, in, in an insulated little environment. But um, I'm sure my brother-in-law would do that. Is that? I'm sure my brother-in-law would have done that, but yeah. I've I've not done fishing on a lake myself. Mm -hmm. I haven't advanced to that level of old man status yet. <laughs> well, it's coming. <laughs> yeah, probably. Have you guys uh, been to those um, like catch your own sushi restaurants? No. No. They they basically have this little like river or something like that in the middle, and the fish are in there. And then you have to catch the fish yourself and then give it to the chef. And then he'll prepare like sashimi or sushi from that. How much is that? So, uh, I don't know. There's one near my place in Hewa as well. So, if I, you ever end up out here, then I'll point you in the right direction or I'll take you there. I but basically, you catch it, reel it in, give it to the chef. They'll make a soup hmm. with some of it. They'll make the sashimi with the main fillet. And then they'll serve you some kind of liquor with the eyes as well, if you really want to. That's <laughs> I think I would have a laughing attack watching grown adults <laughs> fishing like little. I could see, I could see that for a little kid's birthday party. You know, look, Daddy, I got the fish. But uh, I think laughter would 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 take over. That's the thing. Like novelty experiences are what yeah. you end up making a good food memory out of, and that that's the stuff that'll end up being a little bit more Instagrammable later as well, if you are so inclined. Yeah, yeah. But um, well, this is this is the era for that too. I'm not on Instagram. Are you guys you guys on Instagram? No. I am and I don't use it ever. So if people have negative things to say to me, I will not know. <laughs> it's a bit like Bradley's uh Twitter account. Um so okay, cool. That's um doing a bit of outdoor activities in Korea. Um Well, we haven't heard yours yet. What have you been doing outdoors except for ice fishing? I like uh, I like cycling as well. I'm not I'm not into it as much as Bradley is, but I do like cycling. And I used to love doing, especially the rivers around Gyeonggi-do, Gangwon-do, and the Greater Seoul area. And you'd, you'd stamp your little book. You used to give you that little passport type mm. book, and then there'd be little phone boxes along the way, and you get to send them. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I know Bradley will happily enough do just say 160 kilometers in a day. And if I was cycling out of Seoul, get up on the Saturday morning, cycle there, and stay the night, and have Sam Gipsal, which I believe was also voted into the um, KBO Hall of Fame. I have a four for 10, which was voted into the KBO Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, humble brag special today, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I 
So cycling. Yeah, shall I shall I just check off the list? We're tied right now, mate. Yeah, we're tied. We're tied. <laughs> we're definitely going to get out in a second. But I think cycling and a little bit of hiking. My favorite mountain in Seoul is Ansan, the one in Western Seoul. It's not okay. very cold. Okay. Um, but I, I speak because there's really good street foods. As soon as you come down the kind of Saudi Moon area, there's a lot of really good street food when you come up that mountain. So um, I'm not a big hiker. I tend to get bored of it or tired pretty quickly. But if it's a small enough mountain, like Namsan, it's, mm. it's perfect. But Guanaxan or whatever, it's just too, it's too tall, too high. So Bradley, like you were saying before that uh, you're not really that big a fan of the hiking style of things like i remember from my time down in changwon that it was a lot flatter down there like are there a lot of mountains in the surrounding area that you could go up or is it more like bike paths and rivers oh changwon i've i've, I've never lived in changwon but um oh i thought you were living there now changwon hmm. no or is it just no, no, you no. is that just you flipping identity with then so you fan <laughs> no 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 no, no, I cheer for Changwon, and uh, I've, I've got some people down in Changwon, but I've actually never lived there. I do go there, and I've had some good mates over the years. There is a, there is a, a couple of good mountains that I'm aware of. Um, there's one area, uh, there's a mountain that the, the, the local foreigners call Pride Rock, but Rock, but I have not seen it. But uh, no, I live, in, uh, I live in East Seoul, where we do have a couple of mountains, but uh, no, sir, no Changwon here. So sorry, where are right. we living again, guys? Where are we living again? We've been doing this podcast now since May. Um, you're living in East Seoul, that's right. I have I'm living in North Seoul. Seoul for two years. <laughs> I'm living near the dome. We're all in a uh, summer in the great in, in Seoul. Or great summer. Cool. So we've got we've got North, we've got East, we've got West. We need someone in South Seoul to complete the Gate Guardian set. And actually, Bradley Brad Dene, who um, does a couple of the Wednesday night shows with me, he's living smack bang in the center of Seoul, mm. almost right beside the river. So he's a, he's the center we want to get, but definitely yeah, we could do it with somebody, somebody pretty far south. Um, good he's stuff, guys. the conduit for the summoning ritual then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hall of Fame is being replaced this week by Hall of Shame. This has come up a number of times when we've had guests on the show. And Al Painter, I think, was really... Um, I think he had a couple of good views. There's definitely Rob Smith. Rob Smith could probably spend an hour doing Hall of um, Hall of Shame, um, if it's Pak Chan Ho's haircut or something like this. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna do a Hall of Shame now, and um, I think it's better if we get the results in for last week's Hall of Fame, which included our guest Al Painter Matthew. What are the final results, and how did you cheat to win? Um, well, I cheated to win by uh, by forgetting to put it on Twitter, but I don't think that would have changed anything. So what we ended up having was 24 votes cast this week. Three of them were me casting one for everything. So just 21 votes if you take me out of that equation. And um, yeah, last place was RBI Baseball on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I actually looked up a couple of videos about that. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. But that one came in last with uh, four votes. Next was uh, Ite One. It got a nice influx at the very start, but um, people realized that it was just you trying to capitalize on a name. That was a cool one. Ite One's a great name for a baseball player. If you'd chosen Child Mock, you'd have probably won. <laughs> and then aside from that, uh, 13 votes winning last week. The baseball factory that brought... Sun Dong Yeol, Lee Jong Bom, Jay Sup, and a number of other key players in Korean baseball history. Gwangju Jail High School. Congratulations to Gwangju Jail High School. The uh, the school in, in Gwangju, which has produced four major league baseball players, which is more than any other school in Asia, including even the most successful schools in Japan. So Gwangju Jail High School is yep. the most successful Asian school for producing major league baseball players so a worthy what, one yes Bradley. What, what did you say the name of that school was Gwangju Jail. J-E-I-L. okay that's what i thought you said <laughs> jail high school i thought you know yeah i thought I you, went you thought it said it with an a did you yeah yeah i don't know maybe that's why they're such good players they're only let out if they achieve greatness mm. But um, yeah, like there's a bunch of current uh, KBO players from there, like Hog Young Min is from there. 
Um, Sogon Chung is from there. There's a bunch of others as well. I'm always amazed by how many Doosan players seem to have come from, from that high school as well. I mean, you, you'd, you'd assume that a lot of them would go on to play for the Kia Tigers, and they do, and you've already named out a lot of those guys. But uh, it's definitely I, – I, when I go through the, the history of the players, um, I'm always amazed by how many from the other teams, especially Doosan, seem to have come out of that school. Mm. Yeah, it's surprising as well when you see – just like high school ball in Korea, it's not as widespread as in Japan or in the States or anywhere else like that. There's a limited number of schools that are producing the talent that feeds the league. And quite often you'll see MLB come in every one or two years and poach one of the players who was meant to be a first round draft pick. And then he'll end up going through the minor league system for a while and then eventually just make their way back here. Um, you, are you well? With the exception of the last thing you said, uh, is that what happened to uh, Chu Shin Su? He was poached before he, he ever played in the KBO. Is that correct? I believe he may have signed straight out of high school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. I mean, he still has yet to um, retire in the MLB, and, and he's he's done quite well. But who knows if he'll ever play in Korea? But but yeah, yeah. I don't think I think he's been the most successful player one of the most successful Korean baseball players outside of Korea of all time, certainly one who didn't go through the KBL system. Yeah, absolutely. So moving on to the hall of shame for this week, uh, I believe shame. like Bradley Hyders may have just been sick of being on the donut for the hall of fame. So we just decided to change up the format this week to give him a chance and a level playing field. Oh yes. Yes. That's, I, I'll basically do anything to win. Um, I haven't oh, won yet. Well, here we go. Trouble, trouble, trouble now. If you vote for Bradley this week, he will meet you outside Jamshill Stadium with his bottle of Jaeger, and he'll share that with you on next week's show. You're winning. He's a nondescript that. green bottle with nondescript black liquid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. It's not Coca Cola. <laughs> What are you? So, what's your choice, Sang? You, you've wanted to do this for a while. You still have zero successful um, applications for the Hall of Fame. So, what is your first Hall of Shame nomination, Mr. Hyder? Well, I want to preface it by saying something positive. Uh, as we know, there are 10 teams in the KBO and a total of nine regularly used baseball stadiums. Of these nine baseball stadiums, I have no problems with eight of them. I would say several of them are actually really, really good. Uh, Korea, for anyone who lives here or anyone who will come here, will be surprised to see stadiums are. Having said that, not every ballpark can be a gem. So I, without any reservation, would like to nominate what is known as officially the Gochak Sky Dome. I don't refer to it as that. I have a different name for that, but this is a family show and we're not going to use that name. I absolutely despise this stadium for many different reasons, but we'll keep it down real simple to three. First of all, the name Sky Dome. Well, they stole that from the, the, the original name of the Rogers Center in Toronto. Toronto was the first ballpark or first um, uh, city to have a fully retractable roof and they called it the Sky Dome. It's a genius name because it was a domed stadium which could open up and you would see the sky. It makes a lot of sense. Well, the, the Skolchak Sky Dome, the, the, the roof doesn't open. Uh, there's no sky to be seen. So not only does, is the name stolen, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, second point, um, you're just really bad uh, sight lines anywhere. Andrew and I met at an international match between South Korea and Cuba, and we were sitting a few rows back, and we had all this glass partition totally obstructing our view. And the last point I'm going to harp on this stadium, and there's a lot, but these are the top three, or just, just the inside. I mean, you've got this horribly ugly light blue painted uh, seats, which looks like it it, it faded years ago. Um, I've never spent time in prison, but I'm walking around <laughs> the, the concourse level is what I think anyway. prison would be painted like. Uh, this light gray paint all over the floor, the ceiling, uh, the walls. 
Um, and, and the food selection is just absolutely awful. Your choice, I think, is a $30 Pizza Hut pizza uh, or potato chips, uh, and that's it. So um, it's just an all-around horrible stadium, conveniently located, might I add, on the subway. But, but uh, apart from that, uh, those are the three big three uh, objections I have. There are many more, which I will not get into, uh, but that is my uh, nomination for the Hall of Shame. Yes. Can I just ask you one question? If you had to pick one nice thing about the dome, what what is something that what's one redeemable feature about that ballpark? Um, I'll give you two things. Okay, um, the roof hasn't collapsed and no one has died. Okay, that would be a tragedy, and I hope that never happens. Okay, no one has died in that ballpark. That's a good thing. The other positive thing, I, I did attend a concert, a U2 concert at that event. And for uh, a um, concert goer's perspective, it was fantastic. As a, as a concert venue, I quite enjoyed it. I had no issues with it. Okay. I was going to go and see a Metallica concert there at one point, but then oh, I saw yeah. that it was uh, Baby Metal who was supporting them. I like Baby Metal. That's all I'm going to say. Fair enough. Yeah, the, the Dome and I have a bit of a history. Like, I went there pretty much in the first week after they opened it. Mm. And, like, those obstructed sight lines, it used to be so much worse than the plexiglass. They used to just have these steel beams the size of my torso blocking sight lines, mm. which eventually got shifted over to plexiglass and a bunch of the tables got removed after the, um, I believe it was... The Premier 12 they hosted first, and then they ended up hosting a round in the World Baseball Classic. After they hosted the World Baseball Classic, like MLB came in and just said, right, you need to change a bunch of this stuff. Mm. And they did temporarily. Like the scoreboards that they have on the outfield walls, they were not there at right. the start of it. Like they were in addition because of the World Baseball Classic. And in all, all honesty, that's the only thing that saved that stadium for me. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, I think like when the, the, the Premier 12 or whatever, that the competition last year when they played against Canada and Cuba and I think Australia, some right. of the, I, I agree. I don't think the Dome is a particularly good stadium. And I think you're going to hoover up a lot of votes for this because it's, the, it's one of the few constants on Grand Slam, uh, sorry, on my KBO people don't like that ballpark. People seem to like every other ballpark in Korea, but that ballpark. But I think they've done a reasonable job on the inside in terms of design. I think the the heroes players numbers are, are pretty. I think they're pretty cool. And I and I do think that the two screens they have there are nice. Um, but otherwise, yeah. I mean, I I think the security tend to be much stricter than the other ballparks in Korea. I don't really think that they need to be. Um, and also, as you mentioned, it's really expensive. Uh, the, the security, you mean the cowboys, the guys yeah. that walk around with sheriff badges and like woody yeah. hats from the Toy Story? Carl, yeah. Carl. What? I'm just doing a walking dead meme. Oh, right, right, right. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the outside of the ballpark, it looks nice. Uh, the grounds, the, uh, the, the, the landscaping is done. But, you know, yeah, like what you said, a lot of fans don't like it. It replaced Mokdong Stadium, which is still there, which for a small, and we talked about this, for a small little stadium wasn't bad. And I think a lot of fans would agree that they'd rather uh, have, have a chilly um, autumn evening at, at a game in that stadium than a climate-controlled uh, autumn evening in the in the dome. I, I just think as well. My last point on the dome is that Korea absolutely needed a dome. I, I would have preferred something with a retractable roof, but I think that needed to be in Jamshil because if this is your first experience of a dome and the league needed one, it's not great and it's simply too small. It's simply too small. And they're already talking about moving all the games there, the playoff games there after the midpoint in November. Now, probably this year of all years, it doesn't matter because we may not have any fans in the ballparks anyway, but a capacity of around about 16 or 17,000 when they, the country could probably do with a dome or a retractable stadium with double that capacity, um, especially 
in the middle of summer when it's raining heavily or it gets too hot. And those big provincial sides like Lotte Key and Samsung, the Eagles are in town. They can easily fill out a 35 to a 40,000 seater stadium. Uh, I agree. Um, I'm glad Korea, we, we, you mentioned the Premier 12, the World Baseball Classic. We got those, uh, we got to host those matches because it was the Dome Stadium and there are those tournaments are played outside the, the baseball calendar. Uh, I don't, I'm on anti dome, uh, the Sapporo dome in, in, in Japan. I was going to uh, mention that one. That looks beautiful. 20 years old, but it's like they built it yesterday. You know, it's, ab- it, it's not even retractable, but it's absolutely beautiful. You know, so I, I, I yeah, domes aren't bad. Uh, they can be done right. Have you seen the, um, the concept sketches for the new Nippon Ham Fighters dome that they're going to have with the yeah. retractable roof? That looks phenomenal. Mm. Like, for anyone listening to this, look up the Nippon Ham Fighters retractable roof stadium design concept. Or if you go onto the Baseball Pacific International Facebook page, I believe that's being used as one of the um, cover pictures right now. But that's like if a KBO team just took that design, stole it entirely, and then built a new stadium like that, like Lotte, Sajik is in desperate need of demolition and being rebuilt as something better. Like they've got so much real estate along the waterfront that they could use. If they built that stadium on the waterfront, that would be phenomenal. Mm. But- yeah, yeah, I agree. I think I think we all agree that Korea needed a dome or a retractable roof stadium they got one but it's not like a sweater that you can buy in uniqlo and you don't like it you can pass it back they're stuck with this mm-hmm. this is going to be here for a really long time and they didn't do it right and like junk san joe who's been on our show numerous times in the past has talked about the issues um, within the seoul city government when it came to building that ballpark whatever they were left with which is what we see now that's not what they originally wanted. And we're somehow left with this particular design, this capacity mm-hmm. in the stadium. And there's absolutely no reason why Doosan Bears or LG Twins should want to leave Jam Show and move into there as their ballpark. Because one of the suggestions seemed to be that could have been on the cards. There's no reason for them to leave Jam Show and play in that zone. So, so I think you will hoover up a lot of sympathetic votes from baseball fans in Korea who have just had enough. No, Rob, Rob Ranford, uh, the commissioner of the MLB, didn't have. He, he was at some of those games of uh, the Israeli team uh, in the World Baseball Classic, and uh, his words, as is, is, uh, Matthew uh, hinted at, were not very kind uh, for that for that facility. So. Matthew was on TV before. I remember sitting in a bar with Brian Richards, again, formerly of this area, and you were on TV wearing a helmet behind the. Oh, that thing. <laughs> I've still got it up there. It's on top of one of the bookcases. So that was funny. You you stole the show that day. Um, there's no way that the pitchers could not have seen you and the first baseman um, sitting right behind home plate with that enormous helmet. So uh, there, there's I a good think, memory. I think the Spo TV video of that ended up breaking like a quarter of a million hits or something like that. It was fantastic. It was good stuff. Right. Uh, Hall of Shame nomination number two for today, England's Matthew Kerr. What do you have for us? My nomination is something uh, I don't think it's going to beat the Dome. I'm hoping otherwise. My nomination is that ludicrous playoff system. Mm. The playoff system that seems tailor-made to just ensure that whoever is lower down in the rankings has no chance whatsoever of making it to the career series. The automatic buy to the Korea series makes no sense to me. The fact that it's trying to include as many teams as possible is nice, but you've included half the teams in the league in the playoff picture. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a wild card, have that. That's fine. But then go with the traditional playoff format. One versus the winner of the wild card. Two versus three. And give like home field advantage to whoever's in the higher positions. That makes sense to me. Having one team not play baseball for a month while the other teams have to have series after series after series against each other. Meanwhile, you're getting to go away, train, study, learn what they're doing and develop new strategies by yourself. It just makes it almost impossible. Like the team that's won the pennant, barring two times in the last 10 years, 
has won the Korea series every time. Yeah, yeah. And like it, it just needs to change. Like the two game wildcard series is ridiculous enough of a format. Yeah, yeah. And that just makes my blood boil as well. The fact that it's not even a one game advantage, it's basically a one and a half game advantage. If yeah. one of those games ends in a tie, you're eliminated. That's it. Yeah, I think it, it's a great shout. And I think had you maybe had you saved that after you heard the Gojak Sky Dome, then you probably definitely would have won next week's edition because that's another one I think almost everybody will agree with you. Um, Are we doing shame next week as well? Yeah, we could. Oh, we, we could rotate it. We could rotate it. But I agree with you. I think it should be one versus – I like the idea of having a wild card, but it should be one game. And a team that when it finishes fourth has home advantage over a team that finishes fifth, and that's it. Whoever wins yeah. that advances to play the first place team. And I think that there should be two playoff series running concurrently. I hate the way – Separate goes. times. Separate times. Maybe have one day off. So just say if it's at the Heroes versus NC – is on a Tuesday. Both games are on a Wednesday to do something against LG, but then maybe on the Thursday, only do some LG. They don't have to play the whole time altogether, but it's just, you're just sitting there waiting for your turn to play or your turn, your turn to watch your team play. And as I said, actually, the weird thing is that the team that finishes first almost always goes on to win it. So it isn't a disadvantage for them. In fact, it's a massive advantage for them to finish first because you're 80% in the last 10 years likely to win the championship. Yep. Now that I know that it's a whole of shame next week, I've got a perfect nomination lined up already. (laughs) Assuming you don't take it right now. Uh, Bradley, do you have anything to add to that? I agree with you. It it is absolutely ridiculous how uh, they give the the, the team that wins the league, they give them a a buy into the Korea series. Uh, To play devil's advocate, though, I suppose, I I don't know if this is their logic, but it, it, it keeps teams from just going complacent at the end of the season. Uh, you, you really want to win that first place. And, you know, if, if, you are in the, if you are securely in the second place in the league and there's maybe five or six games to go, with that advantage of winning the league, you don't give up in, in coast, right? You, don't, you keep trying your best to really knock off the first place team. I don't know if that's why they do it. Um, but uh, I still am inclined to agree with you. I don't like the format uh, at all. Mm. Cool. Two good shouts. Two good shouts. Um, Are you regretting the format change now, Farrell? Uh, no, but I might just nominate this piece of paper because I think I have no chance of winning, so I'd rather just... <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to sacrifice. Have- I want to keep my one for another week, and I'm going to nominate this yellow. Nah, man, I, I didn't pull my punch. You shoot your best as well. Okay, but I, I'm not saying I don't think mine's a particularly good one either. I just think that you guys have. Uh, that's going to be a really good race to see who wins this between those two nominations. Um, my nomination is, and I admit, and everybody who listens to the show and people who know me are aware of this. I did not grow up playing baseball. I had no idea of the rules of baseball until I came to Korea. Um, I maybe watched Field of Dreams a couple of times, and then I moved here. I saw the Kia Tigers play, and I started to like baseball. So growing up with the game, I think it's very, very different to learning the rules and understanding the culture of baseball as a 25-year-old when you come here for the first time. So I really, really, really hate bunting when there's just a guy on first base, especially when it gets to the playoffs. And I think far too often, Korean managers, I'm not going to say they lose their bottle, but their first instinct every single time seems to be, we've got a guy on first, we need to bum, bunt, him, bunt him on the second. And how often are you watching a really big game and it's a 1-0 game or something and they don't score? And it seems to happen so often. I don't have the numbers of how unsuccessful a bunt is. I understand the logic of a guy on second base with just one out. But I think when it comes to the, the playoffs, the pitching is so good always in the Korean series. The pitching tends to be really, really good that pitchers are not giving up that many opportunities. And I think for me, I just rather guys, even if they're batting 250 or if they're batting 320, whatever, I just wish they would go up there and swing. I understand if there's a guy in first and second and nobody out, you might want to bunt them on the second or third. But I think if there's just, if there's nobody out and a guy in first, I really don't like bunting a guy to second. And it happens all the time when it comes to the playoffs here. Yeah, it really does. Um, that that's a good shout. Like I have lost it so many times this season when Lotte just bunt a guy over to second and then don't bring him home. What annoys me even more 
is like teams will bunt a guy over to second with their big power hitting coming up next. But then the management on the other team doesn't just take that opportunity to intentionally walk the guy and take that away anyway. Mm. Like the strategy that's employed in this league is on a whole other level of ludicrous. And I do not understand it quite a lot. Yeah, I said like, like I I can see that maybe listening to this, who's grown up with the game and understands the culture of baseball way more than I do. They could be spitting it and rage now, but um, it's also the sometimes you get the players who are bunting here, and I don't think they really should be bunting. Um, and we said this before. I think it was a, it was a Tigers game against Samson earlier on this year, and the Samson player hit a home run, and then his next that bad, he was brought up to bunt. I think if a guy's already hit a home run, they got a guy on base. You think that this guy is in position potentially to hit another home run. I think they should just allow players like that to swing. Um, Bradley, what is your your take on um, Moneyball's chapter on bunting? You're secretly messaging us about this. I, I, I can't remember reading it now. It was 10 years ago. But uh, I do remember the bunting. But it's still the same game. And uh, they took uh, they took all the data, uh, all the statistics on bunting uh, that was available at the time. They ran it through a computer, and they determined that there's essentially no point to bunting. Are you Matthews? I've got my copy of Moneyball here, and I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, it's there somewhere. But, what do you uh, think of bunting, Bradley? Do you do you care that much? Do you think it's it's part of the game? Like I'm not saying it should be taken out altogether, but as I said, I think when it comes to the, the playoffs here, managers are really quick to go to bunting straight away. Um, but the pitching tends to be a lot better. We they don't not teams don't tend to have. It's not. A, it's certainly absolutely not a guaranteed way of scoring. I think um, potentially scoring runs in other ways are left behind. Yeah, I, I, I I'm I'm not passionate one way or another, but. Uh, I, I don't see why you need to switch your your method of play to uh, a bunting heavy tactic in the postseason. Okay, I agree with you. I just I don't I don't I don't particularly find bunting to be interesting. Do you think you're going to win the Hall of Fame the Hall of Shame this week? No. <laughs> I found it. Okay. So th this is verbatim what it says for bunting inside of Moneyball. Ready? Don't. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. There you go. Shout out to uh, Michael Lewis, uh, the writer of Moneyball. We are using I'm, your I'm, so, I'm sorry for throwing that book across the room. <laughs> you give uh, Mr. Lewis uh, proper credit. Right. It isn't actually what it says. It's much more scientific yeah. and is well worthy of a read for anyone who hasn't gone through it yet. When's your birthday, Andrew? It's your birthday present. I'm going to get you a uh, money ball, but I'm going to get you the Korean version of it. <laughs> well, that's okay. I'm happy, happy to study better. Uh, yeah, but the Korean version would be really fun. To you. That'll just be, maybe once chapter number one will be called bunting and the 20 reasons why we should do it when it gets to postseason baseball. Uh, no more back to bang vouchers. What's that? No more Beck the Bang birthday voucher. Oh, that coffee shop place. Are they the ones that do oh. like the one liter coffee? Uh, they get the huge one, yeah. There's the there's a compost coffee gives the massive one as well. And the big coffee company. Beck the Bang, one one thousand five hundred won for no, uh, I'm so I'm sorry, compost coffee? Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. There's um there's also the place called the leader or the um the leader, and they spell it the American way, which I think is hilarious because Americans don't use uh, the, the metric system, but people opt to use the American spelling of words like leader. I think that, that makes me laugh. There's your nominations for this week. We have the playoff schedule is given to you by Matthew Kerr. We have the Gojok Sky Dome by Bradley Hyder. And we have the speed at which KBO managers immediately go to, to bunt a guy into second when it comes to the playoff uh, system over here. Guys, um, before, we let, before we get out of here, um, let's have a quick look at the table. It's a Sunday night. By the time people get around to listen to this, it's going to be Monday, I'm guessing. I apologize. It probably. probably. Right. Um, so, I, yet again, as we've discussed many times before, 
a great looking table, especially for the top six, potentially the top seven sides. Um, the KT Wiz were so close to leapfrogging Dusan today, but the Bears managed to hold on for a tie in Bradley's favorite uh, Sky Dome earlier on today. Um, huh? Look at the gap between third and sixth. Um, two and a half games between third and sixth. Um, who would like to offer some insight or thoughts on this? I can offer you some doom if you want to hear my thoughts about Lotte's chances. Oh, here we go. So, um, I, I understand that Lotte want to try and bully and play for a big inning against like these quote-unquote less talented pitchers or the pitchers lower down in the order or in the priority for a team. But Lotte have a habit of not preparing, I think, or not scouting out pitchers properly if they're not in the top three or top four in the order. Because like, Pinto has been struggling quite a lot this season for SK. And then the guy who started yesterday had like an 80 RA or a 15 ERA versus Doosan MC. And then suddenly like a 1.2 against Lotte. <laughs> And he put up a zero against them again yesterday. Like, Lotte are not giving these guys the respect they deserve, and they're suffering for it. And I don't know if that's down to the management. I don't know if that's down to the ethic of the players. But there were a lot of games where run support cost Lotte this season. And it's definitely the reason where they are right now, because they've had some stellar pitching outings. Like, they held SK to five runs across two games. And put one away against each of against one each day. Yeah. Like if you're not going to have the offense capable of doing that or not preparing for the pitchers, or God forbid, swinging at the second pitch rather than seeing a few and giving the people after you a chance to look at it, what are we doing here? <laughs> um, in saying all that, not only are there only three and a half games. Oh, sorry, five games out of the last playoff spot. But the, but the Giants are still only nine games off first. Now, they're not going to finish first, but they're still in with a very firm chance of making the postseason. So the Dinos, the no-chance Dinos, um, are holding on to the slenderest <laughs> of leads over the Keem heroes, and then the two Jamshill Bay sides are in third and fourth. And the Tigers have won eight and lost two of their last 10, but still can't get out of sixth spot at the moment. Um, I think it's brilliant. I think it's a great looking table. The league is infuriating, and um, bullpen, bullpen meltdowns could well be a, a Hall of Shame nomination in the future, but it's just so many of these. But I love how the table looks right now. I think no matter what our guest said last week, I think we can wave goodbye to the Samson Lions at this point. It's the top seven, yeah. and that's it. I would argue the top six. At this point, though, I would love it if KT could go and nip third from LG. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be cool. Um, no no shiny jacket parade this year. Um, cool. Thank you for your thoughts. It's, it's nice for your input there, Matthew. Our third guest is half asleep on the sofa. It's a Sunday night. He, he wakes up nice <laughs> and early after his black... Um, beverage there so are, are you tired bradley it's ready to go to bed yeah it's about that time time for bed boys mm. uh, cool um big, 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 big next, weekend so. yeah next week by the way the kt Wiz are playing against the Dusan bears and that's a game that our series i think a lot of people will look forward to um thank you so much for your contribution today when do you think we'll have you on the show again bradley two sucks coming up so maybe sometime in october <laughs> Two stars coming up, but it won't be for a couple of weeks. And, and who's to say what's going to happen with this COVID situation? So I'd say um, next weekend will probably uh, probably be good for tuning in and uh, hanging out with you guys uh, <laughs> on, on Sunday Thanks, as we do. Yeah. Thanks. That means a lot to us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Matthew, good luck. Have a great week. Back at work. Um, we're back down to level 2.0 here, so life is beginning to get back a little bit closer. Slowly but surely. Just got under 100 today, so um, that's a good thing to see. Really? Under 100? Locally. Uh, last I checked, it was under 100 new cases today. Yeah. Locally. Wow. That, that, that may have changed on the local scale, but, mm. but yeah, we'll have to 
I can't find it right now. We'll have to check that later and um, see exactly what the number is. But I think it'll relax a little bit when it stays under 100 and eventually gets back towards that sub-50 area that we were looking at before. That'd be nice. It'd be good, good, uh, good goal to aspire to. So Grand Slam KBO today, cycling, hiking, ice fishing, uh, CD areas outside Guangzhou Bus Terminal, Hall of Shame, and look at the table. Uh, monumental show. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a great week. <laughs> Have a good one. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Bye.